Hello everyone, welcome to Onion Skin, and this is the light shade tone 3D-ish thing that is a brand new feature to Toon Boom Harmony 12. At the time of this recording, I couldn't find really any documentation or at least any video tutorials on how to do this, so I've been spending all evening trying to figure it out and have sort of figured it out. So consider this video to be me rushingly typing FIRST in all caps with exclamation marks and ONES. So I'm going to walk you through how to assemble one of these effects real quick. You know, here's an example I prepared earlier. I know it's crude, leave me alone, I just figured it out. Uh, and here's how it looks. So take a screenshot of that, put it aside so you can assemble one of these later because it is quite a specific order that all of the nodes need to be assembled in. These are the six that is comprised of. Under the node library there's a new section called shading. Uh, and almost all of them are quite critical in putting together in it even a simple effect like that. Uh, so here's how it looks with everything turned on. And let's create a new one from scratch over here in this second network. So first thing I'm going to do is lay down some colors. with big dark blue circle, a light little circle, and with a half red circle on this side, and a half green circle on this side. Now, take note that I didn't use the paint bucket in drawing any of that, and that's important, because uh, the paint bucket will change any color zones or vector shapes, uh, meaning it's flattened, and if it's removed, it will create holes. If I cut any of these away, the original shapes are still there. So each shape is stacked up on top of one another. Uh, that's an important aspect in making this effect work. So if you need to have it across different um, drawing elements, or you need to be using the paint bucket and all that kind of stuff, grab a composite node and set it to pass through and that will work just as well. You can plug as many things into there as you like and we'll treat it all as the one image. All right, so I got a dumb shape going. What happens next? So over in this example, you can see there's still the generic single thread that goes down to the composite as normal. If you're not familiar with nodes, basically each thread represents one generation of uh, the image. So usually there needs to be one raw one without anything happening to it so we can still see the picture. And we're going to pull out a volume object node from here, and this second thread is where all the fun stuff is going to start to happen. So volume object tells the program, I think, uh, that this is not to be taken as a drawing anymore, but as a sort of 3D-ish, but not really thing. Yeah. Uh, the next one we need straight after that is a normal map. This thing will take color zones and tell it to either be high or low uh, when it's hit by the flashlight. After that, we need a light shader. This will cause everything that is hit by the flashlight to light up. And our normal map goes into the middle of that one. We also need to take a thread straight from the volume object, and that goes into the left one. So what we've assembled there is something that's just the straight uh, volume object, and something that takes all of the chisel and rise information. Finally, the left port takes a light position node, uh, and that generates the flashlight itself that's going to light all this up. Finally, that can go down into our composite. So now to tell it to start doing stuff. Head over and hit the blue flower to enter render mode, and we can see all the effects taking place. Hit on any of these yellow squares to open up the properties for those nodes. Uh, normal map does quite a lot of stuff. First thing to do is go to Object and choose Object 1. Uh, that says now use this as a light. And you can see already the edge of the whole shape has started to light up from the torch. Now we want to add some extra colors to it. I'm going to add the light blue from the center, the red, and the green. So all of these are going to start taking effect now as we start chiseling away at their depth. 
So see as I pull them down here, I'm probably just going to snap them all to 50. I say probably. That's exactly what I did. And now you can see all three of these shapes are starting to be affected by the light source. Close that down and finally the light shader is where we get to decide the color and a whole lot of other different parameters. Uh, so hit the box, we'll bring up a, or make it a, a light blue, tends to make sense on a blue image. Uh, there we go, they're starting to light up like that. And we're all good, so the effect's starting to work. Uh, now, the main perk with this feature that Toon Boom's advertising is now you can shade your characters without really shading them and have them pass light sources and all that kind of stuff. But so far we've only had it affect visible shapes. Uh, so this is why I put the red and the green in. I want to make those invisible so it becomes a, a, you know, a shaded zone. And that's just done with a good old color override found under filter. So I'm going to pull one of those out, hold down option and plug it in over here on our raw straight strand. Open that up. I'm going to pull the red and the green from the left to the right. And under this pull down tab here, you can see one of the options is color not visible. So now, as far as our image is concerned, it doesn't exist. However, its depth does exist. So we can create a shaded effect. Now on the original example, we have not just lights, but shadows as well. This is what the tone shader is for where the light shader is used for the flashlight hitting something. The tone shader is the shadow that the flashlight casts. And setting up one of these is really straightforward. It's exactly the same as this one. So another thread from the volume object, another thread from the normal map, and another one from the light position. That goes down into the composite, and exactly the same parameters will be applied to the shadow. I'm going to open that one up, give it a dark bluish color something really close to black i reckon yeah there we go so you can see the embossing effect is once again taking shape uh, and there we have it that is the effect working the last thing is the flashlight how do we animate that when you click on it it becomes active but we can't see it in the camera view if it's if you don't see this toolbar right click up here and go to camera view that will open up these ones and look for the orange stick line thingy and that will activate the camera itself. Go to your free transform tool or even better this one here uh, which can be activated by right clicking and going to advanced animation. Roll over the red square and you can pull the flashlight out and you can also pull the direction that it faces and move it all around and see it updating. It can be animated just like any other shape or what have you down here. And you can animate spinning all around and, you know, having a character pass by it and all good, happy, fun time. Uh, so that's it. It's actually a pretty straightforward effect when you kind of know where all these boxes are supposed to go. Uh, so spend some time putting together a simple thing like this. Crack open these nodes and mess around with all the parameters. You get something really cool looking. Uh, and I can't wait to see what the Tomb Boom community is able to pull off with something like this. Uh, so good luck. That's all from me. Let me know how it goes. Bye-bye.